Hello, hello everyone. A very quick announcement. I lied to you. I'm so sorry. I lied to you. Uh, it was not on purpose. It was not my intention. I didn't know I was lying to you. I still lied to you, apparently. I just didn't know better. I'm sorry. But anyway, so when I told you in some video before um, that there is no way to import the jar in VS Code and that is a complete and utter lie. That is my bad. I'm sorry. But um, there is a way to import a jar in the zip, I think. Um, but you don't have to just use the open folder thing. So first we are in studio. We right click on it, select export. And here we have any point studio project to mill the playable archive. So select next. So I'm going to head and rename these to test one, two, three, just so I know which one it is. And we said we will attach the project sources and we will not include the project modules and dependencies since we won't be deploying to Cloud Hub. We can also see here this note, a lightweight package generated without modules and dependencies won't be deployable to Cloud Hub, but can be imported into Studio. So anyway, that's what we want to attach project sources. And we're going to have it here in download says one, two, three, click on finish. This will generate a jar file. Press OK. Now we have our new jar and we can head back to ACB or VS Code. Now we open the command palette and we select import a mule project like the docs told us to do. So we're going to go ahead in downloads and we said test one, two, three. So we're going to get this jar. Now it's going to ask me for a project folder. I'm going to select downloads and select project folder. And once this has completely loaded, you can go ahead and open this. Now, this is one of the reasons why it's better to use the export and import instead of just opening the folder, actually, because, for example, you can see stuff like this, like the Java version. Like if we go back to Studio, I can actually see here that I am using the Java version 8. And this was on purpose so I could show you, like, for example, if this project is already running on Java version 8, but note that I have my mule server not 497, which this combination is not possible from ACB, but I can do it in Studio. So for example, if I were just to open this, it would modify the mule artifact.json from both of the projects because I would be referencing to the same part. So especially if you're just trying out ACV and don't want to use it in your day to day or you don't want it to modify your actual GitHub repo or your, your enterprise files, you know, um, it's good to do this for now because it helps you to see the differences on the new project instead of just modifying the old project. So yeah, for example, in Studio, we have uh, 496 and 18, which is not really possible in ACB. So if we select here, set versions, it's now telling us what is it, what is the runtime, which is 496. But the Java version here is unsupported. So we have to select 17 and click on apply. So now the changes are done. You can even go to connectors and update as needed. In this case, it was just one. So you can also apply there. Cool. So now if we open our mule artifact.json, we can see now that we have our Java specification version 17. And in Studio, we still have the 18. Even if I come here and try to refresh this, um, because we selected another project folder, this pretty much made a copy of what we had in the jar. So this stayed the same because this is its own project, which lies in the Anypoint Studio workspace. And this one is located in downloads. So also, if you go here to the source control, because we are not really using the repo from the other one, you would have to initialize a new one or make a reference to the repo that you had in the other one. If you want to just like replace everything that you're doing, which I don't think it's the case for you right now. So yeah. To recap, if you're having issues opening your same project from Studio to ACB, go ahead, click on export, select inside the mule folder, the Anypoint Studio project, blah, 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 select next, remove the include project modules, just leave the attached project sources, put it somewhere, click on finish, 
then head to VS Code, click on the command palette, select import a mule project, select your jar, and select where you want the new project to be. Do you want to know another secret? Well, it's not a secret anymore. It was kind of like shown and like there's an article and videos and everything, but there is a new Curitech AI plugin that you can use in Studio Now. So I don't know, go and check it out. It's really cool. You can just apply everything from here. You can see your tasks or you can create new tasks and you can see like you can even undo stuff. It's pretty neat. You can move it around to be wherever you want it to be. I decided that I liked it more on this side but it's really up to you. You can like close it and reopen from here. It's really handy anyway. Okay, so that was my quick update for you. I'm um, sorry I lied to you. I wasn't on purpose again. It was just ignorance. <laughs> All right, this was just a really quick update for you. See you later, bye.